so I just finished editing and posting my January 2019 highlight review video. As you can tell, now it is nighttime because there's a dramatic change in lighting. I decided it would be best to make a separate video where I talked about my setbacks as well as all of the spiritual things that happened in January. I think it's important to give the struggle some focus. It's always good to interplay both the struggle and the hope because that's what life is. I feel like it would be unfair to people if I only talked about the highlights. It wouldn't be fun if I only talked about the struggle because life is always going to be a mixture of both. Let's start. January 2019, all of the prophetic words that were being spoken went a little bit like this. This is your year of elevation. God is going to elevate you. All of the struggle that you have gone through over the past three years is finally going to you're, it's finally going to make sense. Words that said, this is your season. This is not just a season of breakthrough, but it's a season where all the things that you've been hoping for and contending for would be brought to life. If you follow Pastor Michael Todd from Transformation Church, his whole series is also going along with it where it talks about how this is the year of release. Release into purpose, release into destiny, release into health, and just release. And everything has been so encouraging. But what I've really come to learn is that when we start to take hold of all the truths that God is placing in front of you, when you start to believe it, when you start to pursue it, that's when the enemy starts to attack. I find that even if you're not a Christian, the more that you try to pursue greatness, the more you try to even just work on yourself and become a better person, suddenly life starts to suck and life starts to knock you in the face like multiple times and you start to think, damn, I'm never going to get to where I want to go. But that's not the truth. That is why in my last video, I said that setbacks are setups to be launched forward because when it all comes down to it, it's how you view your setback. Are you going to see your setback as an area for you to see what's wrong and to see what's not working and then choose to grow from there? Or are you going to get pushed back and think, okay, I guess this is just where I'm meant to stay for the rest of my life? That's not truth. We're not meant to stay where we are. We are meant to be elevated and we're meant to push back the pushback. That makes sense. <laughs> like whenever there's a pushback, we fight forward. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not going to go into all of the details, but basically people started just speaking life into me and speaking prophetic words over me regarding music. People who have never met me, people who don't know me, began to say things like, you're meant for music, you're meant to write songs, etc., etc. Um, music is the thing that I've always been most inclined to do, yet it's the thing that I felt most insecure about, so I'd always put it on the back burner. Like, I have... A a lot of confidence honestly in my writing I have a lot of confidence in my ability to speak and different things but for some reason music which most people know me for is the very thing that I don't want to do or I'm afraid to do but music was spoken over me and as I began to take hold of it I found that the struggle that happened in my mind was that I would start looking at all my failures I would start looking at the areas where I was and then I'd look at where I want to be and I felt like there was so much space in between that I just felt like a failure here's where I want to be but it looks so impossible to get there and I found that I would just get so discouraged I'm, I'm, I'm very busy I'm always running around I'm always doing stuff which is something I'm working on this year I actually got really called out where my pastor and different leaders in my life are saying, Sarah, like this is your year where you cannot be so busy. You have to say no to things and you have to rest. For me, resting is so difficult because I feel like I'm not doing anything. So we did the prophetic conference. It was crazy nonstop busy. And then I slept like the whole day Monday. When I woke up like at night, I was just like, I'm a failure. I'm never gonna amount to anything. I wasted a whole day. My friend had to like speak life into me and I was like, Sarah, calm down. Like you, okay, he didn't, he was like way nicer than that. But he was like, Sarah, you know, who's that character in the Bible? Mar Mary, you know, Martha was doing so much and got mad at Mary. 
but Mary was doing the right thing. She was resting at the feet of Jesus. How can you do the things that you're called to do if you don't rest? How can you fill other people's baskets if you have nothing in your own basket to give? It's a big struggle for me to learn to not view rest as something that's bad isn't laziness. Laziness is its own thing, but if you're resting to recover, that's not laziness. Not something I have to speak to myself. Listen to your body, you guys. If you're tired and exhausted, there's a reason. Rest. Fix your sleep schedule. Get some sleep. You cannot do what you're meant to do if you're not rested. I'm gonna share, I'm gonna switch back and share the clip that I recorded earlier. I had a herpes outbreak on my face. Um, and I know herpes is really normal, but um, how I got it was a very traumatic experience for me. Um, have, I've been praying for divine healing for a long time, but for some reason when I went through this outbreak, I dealt with so much shame and guilt as if like the pain and the guilt of my past came back. And during all of it, the Lord just started to minister to my heart about what it looked like in the spiritual realm when people are dealing with shame like people hide their face they don't want to be seen they don't want to go out they don't want anyone to look at them and that's what shame does to us spiritually and i just felt like um with what i was facing in the body the lord was using it to teach me about how to speak against shame and guilt and overcoming shame and guilt has been something that i've been talking about for a long time but for me to go through what i went through I didn't realize that I had not gotten over um, my struggle with shame and guilt. So God really used that. He also showed me that I really have a hard time um, trusting in Him. I sing the song like, all your promises are yes and amen. And then I don't believe it for myself. And that um, was a huge wake up call for me. Like how could I believe that I can lay hands and God will go and heal someone else. but um, God would choose not to heal me. So again, I think I'll talk about that in another video because it's a lot. I just think that what I learned the most in January was that every time we try to do better, there's going to be something that comes our way to make us believe that we cannot do better, that we cannot get to where we're going, or that we're not good enough. There are also going to be other times where the past tries to grab our attention, where the past tries to catch up to us, and we have the choice. Are we going to allow ourselves to become victim to the past or victim to our circumstance, or are we going to rise above it? This whole prophetic word of elevation is also learning how to elevate ourselves over our circumstance, to look above what we're seeing, and instead choosing to focus on where we're going on, if you're a Christian, the God that is there for us. If you're not a Christian, focus on the people who believe in you. That's what matters. Sometimes when you don't believe, there are going to be other people who believe for you. That's definitely another thing that I learned this year is that in all the areas where I lacked faith, there were people who believed in me even more. A pastor said to me once, like, you know, Sarah, I believe in you and your future more than you believe in it. And I want you to believe in it. Even when I finished my last video, he actually sent me a text and out of the blue was like, I'm so stinking excited about your future. Sarah, don't get tired. Don't get weak. You're in this for the long haul. I actually want to leave whoever's watching with that quote. Don't get tired. Don't get weak. You're in this for the long haul. I strongly believe that when you make the decision to pursue those desires of your heart, when you pursue your passions, when you desire to make a life worth living, it's going to get tiring. You're going to want to give up. That's just the reality. It is not roses and flowers all the time. Sometimes it's easier not to care. Sometimes apathy is easier. But sometimes what's easy is not worth it. And so don't get tired, don't get weak, keep moving forward, keep pressing on, even in disappointment, even during the times when you feel like you're not getting anywhere, keep going. It's gonna be worth it. If you don't believe in your future, I believe in your future. Believe in mine. <laughs>
I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or want to go deeper um, to some of the things I was facing or hear more of what I've learned, then please feel free to comment below, send me a message, anything. I'd love to connect with you. So thank you and God bless. Bye.